the universe, or should I say the solar system, holdeth no greater enigma and mystery than the sunspot. The sunspots uh, are actually black holes under visible light and may, in fact, mimic black holes. Such strong gravitational attraction, such strong magnetic fields generated that light cannot escape. And the only uh, way we can see the actual energy in an active region that looks dark is to look at it through different energy wavelengths. Otherwise, in visible light, they all look like what? All together now black hole. The thing that is of particular value is that we know for a fact that the channel, the Higher Truth channel uh, off of YouTube proposed a theory and a hypothesis that sunspots were nothing more than impact sites. Impact of what? Iron asteroid. And the clue got me when I was looking at the early diagrams on some of the images that after a big detonation on the sun, there's all these black holes that quickly f mold together and rapidly disappear. But they, they, they were being registered as, as sunspots in, in terms of the image, but not in terms of a designation. So there was these black holes that looked just like sunspots but they, they just showed up after a detonation. So I knew that plasma falling back to the sun could create a hole in the surface plasma. And so at that point, I thought, well, maybe other impacts could do this too. Because that was always there after a major detonation. All of a sudden, there was hundreds of sunspots. Nobody was la labeling them as sunspots. But on one particular diagram... It showed dozens and dozens of brand new sunspots um, that, that looked like sunspots. Let's just put it that way. So, and those rapidly degraded and disappeared after a day or, or two at the most. Always um, disappearing. But meanwhile, the main big active regions or sunspots uh, hung around a little longer. But eventually they all degrade. So, I, I just started researching that hypothesis, but the, the funnest thing was running it by a astronomer that I know. And, you know, you say, well, how do you know a volcanologist? How do you know astronomers? I'll tell you right now, okay? As you look at these quote-unquote black holes on the sun, uh, then you have to look at highly magnetic regions where photons of light do not escape only higher energy. That's why they show up on the other imagery, but not visible light. But these mini black holes with such strong magnetism, where, what's the most magnetic element on the periodic table? Iron. So what would that do to the surface of the sun if these massive iron, iron asteroids fragmented and landed and in, embedded into the surface plasma. What would happen? And what about this 11-year cycle with sunspots? They can't explain it. They say it's a change in the plasma current. Okay. <laughs> That's not an explanation. But Jupiter just happens every 11 years to line up with Aquarius where this object came into our solar system from. It's that side of the solar system that Jupiter's on now where all the everything is tilted down. It's maximum decline where most planets are stretched out the furthest and have their, their furthest distance from the sun on this side of the solar system. So when Jupiter... The behemoth of all behemoths gets in that side and lines up with the sun. You can bet it's going to pull in and sling in all kinds of debris. All kinds of elements. 
and therefore shower the solar system with asteroids and cometary fragments every 11 years when it gets on the side of the sun it is now it starts pulling in more and more and more and the pattern the pattern of sunspots the linear progression the linear orientation uh, mimics the craters on the moon craters on mars would that line up as a fragmentary pattern? So who's to say the sun just is cannot have impacts? That it's the biggest, most debris-sucking object we know of, and it's the creator of our solar system. So it should be taking impacts more than anything else in the solar system. So what happens when an iron asteroid hits? And fragments you have different polarities in your, in your active region you have a linear debris field uh, and that mimics impact craters so we me and my uh, astronomy friend we, we we try to debunk this theory we brought it up over a wine tasting and if you want to get to know volcanologists and stuff like that simply join a wine tasting club near a university or a chess club and hang out for a couple of weeks there spend some time and you'll get to know some professors i just hung out to, to uh, near a university that just was known for its astronomy program and so we talked about the iron asteroids in the sun making linear progressions we talked about the origins of those sunspots being being very very uh, obvious after we you know went through all the list of things that we could try to debunk that theory and it can't be debunked it is undebunkable that uh, sunspots are in fact impact sites so you know I'm sitting here running by you uh, p image after image of actual sunspot linear orientation to multiple sunspots then I get to this uh, particular image of the Sun and there's one small issue it's not the Sun it's Jupiter and it's Jupiter in infrared and it's Jupiter after it suffered its impact of the comet shoemaker levy and its fragments and now we see just how familiar amazing you can mistake Jupiter for the Sun and those impact craters look like sunspots but it's when we were looking at the progression and the orientation of these craters it's when we looked at that that um, we saw anomalies in the center of the craters in fact we looked at the shadow and the shadow of those anomalies are about twice the distance of the actual height of those anomalies. Those are very tall towers with very pointed obelisk shadow. The shadow is so pointed it looks like the Washington Monument in uh, both of these craters. Now every time I find something bizarre in the center of a crater I say, well, why wasn't that destroyed when it impacted? And how did it get there after the impact? And every time there's something in the center of the crater, the crater has an exit, an entrance point, a, a slot, a canyon, uh, a path into that crater. Meanwhile, I have never seen something in a crater in the center that did not involve a path into that crater. Not a one. And so I, I find that's a common feature, uh, a, a way into the crater. But just the ones with these bizarre anomalies in dead center in the crater. Now, wait a minute. During impact, everything should be leveled. It should look like the top crater, the big one. But they don't. It's a very tall obelisk. And when I subject this to the negative, that white triangle. I mean, that's, those are perfect triangles. Now, agreed, we're looking at the shadow. Shadows can be deceiving. That's why you can do shadow puppets. 
But you, there's no mistaking a pointed feature, a narrow pointed feature, and a tall, tall structure in a place where it should be level. And of course, the lower right, we're trying to look for other pointed features. There's kind of a pyramid shape on that uh, feature on the edge of the big crater, but nothing I could sink my teeth into. But man, when you look at the triangular shadows of those obelisks, you have to wonder what's going on. And uh, remember, on in the middle of November, we had earthquakes, we had dolphin strandings, and but we also had a 90 degree alignment, uh, and the Earth was aligned with Planet X. But meanwhile, the other leg of the 90 degree alignment was formed by Venus and Mercury. And so, but Stereo A is directly behind Earth at 90 degrees, so it should have a perfect view of the transit of Venus and Mercury. And there we go. Here comes that transit of Venus and, and, hey, wait a minute. Where the heck is Mercury? Interesting. Well, anyway, as the alignment finishes, notice the largest solar flare of the sequence happens at the end of alignment. Again, you're looking at a recoil action causing maximum amplitude of fluctuation. And finally, to end end the video on a little bit of trivia that should make you go hmm wow uh, this is uh, africa people are not aware of just how massive africa really is you could take the entire united states and fit it into north africa and not even cover a third of north africa then you could take china put it in south africa and not cover and still leave a third of that part of Africa uncovered. Together, they're only able to cover two-thirds of Africa, the United States and China put together. So it's a massive, massive continent. And now you know why there's vast resources. It's because it's vast to begin with. It has volcanoes, rift zones. It has everything. It has some of the largest river systems in the world. So it's, it's really a diverse continent, and now you know why there's so much resource uh, in Africa and why everybody's clamoring uh, to get their paws on Africa.